In this super motivating after dark clean with me, I am tackling some of the messier areas in my home and basically getting them reset for the morning ahead. It is a school night and the day kind of got away from us and everything is a bit of a disaster right now. So before I go to bed tonight, I want to make sure that everything is picked up, put away, cleaned up and basically ready for the next morning. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and joining me for this clean with me. If you're new here, my name is Janet. I'm a stay at home mom of three and I post weekly videos with lots of cleaning motivation, home and mom life. I want to thank you so much for joining me, for cleaning along with me, or just getting motivation while I clean. You being here and supporting my channel really means a lot to me, so if you could go ahead and hit the like button, that really helps to support my channel. And if you haven't already, if you could subscribe, that also means a lot to me, and thank you. I was your first love, and you were my first one. Before I start tackling the kitchen, I wanted to get a load of laundry started. I have always laundry to do. There is just a never ending laundry pile to wash, to fold, to sort, and I really try to keep on top of it because as you know, it can very quickly become out of control and just completely overwhelming. So I try really hard to at least get one load washed a day. Usually it's more, but every once in a while it does get out of hand and uh, I just get backed up. So I'm trying hard to get ahead of it again and before I get into the kitchen, I wanted to get this load of laundry started so that way I knew I could get it into the dryer before I went to bed. You gotta leave me here tonight. We are a family of five. We also have a dog and for me, the way that makes the most sense to wash our laundry is to separate it into the following categories. I have towels in a separate load. I'll usually do my clothes in a separate load, my husband's clothes in a separate load, and my children's clothes in a separate load. Um, I find it's just easier to keep on top of it that way. It kind of takes the sorting part out of it after everything's cleaned. And I know if there's a load in the dryer that's all kids clothes that that's my kids responsibility so they can go through and sort those and get those things put away. Where I live in Metro Vancouver, pretty much everything needs to either go in the compost or uh, it needs to be recycled. So that usually means that I have a bowl of food scraps sitting in my sink and a whole bunch of soft plastic, clamshells, cans, all sorts of things sitting on my counter because they have to go into the recycling in the garage. I used to have bins in my kitchen, but uh, my dog is still pretty young and he kept getting into those. So I had to move all those recycling bins into the garage. And honestly, I kind of prefer them in the garage, but it does mean that I usually have this pile of recycling that is just waiting to be taken out into the garage. I have very little counter space in my kitchen and so I do usually try pretty hard to clear off the counters, wipe them down, keep them just clear so that we can use them throughout the day. But every once in a while, like today, it just gets away from me and stuff sits on here. So before I start washing dishes, I'm just really scrubbing the counters with my countertop spray and making sure that they're nice and clean before I go ahead and put the clean dishes on them. Usually 
usually I have my kids bring me all their dishes, their water bottles, anything that they might have left like in the family room, but it was already about an hour past bed and I definitely wasn't going to get them out of bed to do this. We had sort of a chaotic afternoon, so definitely the focus was getting everybody into bed and I just let it slide for tonight. But usually this is something that my children are responsible for. Um, tonight though, I just wanted to make sure that I got those in the dishwasher and washed for the next morning. Let me know in the comments who else does this. You start your dishwasher and pretty much as soon as you start it, you notice that there's something else that needs to go in there. So you have to open it up and sort of rearrange to get that one last thing in. I often find that I do this with laundry as well. So if you're like me and do this, let me know in the comments below. Before I fill up my sink to hand wash the rest of these dishes, I wanna give it a good clean. I like to use baking soda and dish soap. I also use a pot scrubber. It kind of mixes those two products to become like a paste. The baking soda gets any stains out of the sink. The soap cleans the sink. I was always taught to clean my sinks before you wash your dishes so that you're not introducing more germs and bacteria to your dishes as you're washing them. But I've noticed a lot of people wash their sinks after they're done their dishes. Let me know in the comments below, what do you do? Do you wash your sink before you do dishes or do you wash your sink after you're done dishes? I recently organized the cabinet below my sink and it is working out so much better. I'm so glad I took the time to reorganize it, get some new bins that worked better for the space that I have. It's way more functional and definitely worth the time that it took. And it didn't cost very much, but it was definitely worth buying those extra organizational bins because it just makes my space more functional. If you're interested to see how that cabinet is organized, I did film it and I have a video that I will link in the description below so that you can check it out after this one. hope that you're getting a ton of cleaning motivation and if you are please hit that thumbs up button to let me know that you're liking this video It is 
is springtime with a dog, which means lots of dog hair all over the floors. And if you have a dog, you know it is just a never ending process. I do try to vacuum about once a day in the main areas of my home just to sort of keep on top of this, um, but it, it's just a never ending battle. I'm really fortunate that these gray tiles always look clean, but that's not always the case. They are super forgiving because they hide all the dog hair, they hide the drops of mud and whatever else is spilled on them, but they certainly get dirty. So I do like to get these floors vacuumed and then I'm going to use my steam mop and give the main areas of my home, so the front entrance, the laundry room, the main hall, the powder room, and the kitchen, a um, steam mop and just get them nice and clean for the day ahead. Look at all this dog hair and dust that came out of that little corner when I pulled out my steam mop. It's just another example of how quickly all of this accumulates and of course there's a random rock that I almost sucked up with this vacuum which definitely would have been a bad thing so I'm glad that I caught that in time. And then of course I just like to quickly clean out the brush of my vacuum, pull out any fur balls. Um, I have three daughters with long curly hair, so there's no shortage of hair that likes to get tangled up in our vacuums, which is pretty gross, but um, definitely wanna put that in the garbage so that it doesn't end up clogging up the vacuum runs. Before I fill up my steam mop, I noticed that my laundry room sink was really sticky. One of my kids had put a blanket in this sink that she had spilled cereal on the blanket and then the blanket like sat in the sink for a couple days and basically cemented to the sink. So the sink needed a really good scrub just to get all that dried cereal milk off of it and um, it could probably use a clean anyway so that's okay. I have this sprayer here and it always gets stuck on the plumbing um, underneath the sink. Let me know if that happens to you and if you found a trick to deal with the hose so that it doesn't get caught on the plumbing below. Strangers again. I thought we'd never fall. Could have tried much harder. All we have are scars. You said we'd get so high. Whenever I steam mop, I like to add a couple drops of either mint or citrus essential oil to the water tank. I don't know if this is something you're supposed to do with your steam mop, so I guess just be aware of that, but my steam mop is so old, it's definitely on borrowed time. I've done this for probably close to 12 years now, it hasn't hurt my steam mop, but again, I don't know if that's okay to do or not. I just really enjoy the smell of, um, on this night I was using a mint oil. I like that refreshing mint smell in my home and I just think it's a lovely way to diffuse oil in your home and have a nice smell while you're cleaning. Get started. It's time to 
get my head up again You said that you had to I'll try to forget you Just didn't think we'd end up this way Like strangers again In my home, I know that my steam mop, the water tank will do all of these main areas of my home, but I do like to switch out the mop pad about halfway through. So I'll do like the laundry room, the hall, the powder room, and the entryway, and then I will switch out the mop pad and do the kitchen with a clean mop pad. At this point my laundry is just about done in the washing machine so I'm going to take these blankets out of the dryer, clean the dryer uh, lint out of there and then get the clean clothes out of the washing machine, put them in the dryer and get that started before I call it quits for the night. If you liked this video and got cleaning motivation, please let me know in the comments below and give this video a thumbs up. Please also subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so that YouTube lets you know when I upload. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.